In the next three segments of this chapter, we're going to be covering three gram-negative rods of the enteric tract. The first one we'll cover is Campylobacter jejuni, a common cause of gastroenteritis and diarrhea. The title of this scene will be Camping Guy and the Bears. The guy and the bears in the title is meant to remind you of Guillain-Barre syndrome, a somewhat rare but testable complication of Campylobacter infections. So we'll start by drying the forest that our guy will be camping in. You're not camping unless you have a campfire, and that's because we find comfort and warmth, and as does Campylobacter. And this is because Campy is said to be thermophilic. It prefers to grow in the heat at temperatures around 42 degrees Celsius. And just like the campfire is intrinsically linked to camping, I want you to remember that Campylobacter is intrinsically linked to heat. Now let's get some food roasting on this fire. We're going to draw some chicken on the rotisserie. This is because Campylobacter's main reservoir is the intestinal tract of other animals, like poultry. Since it's in the intestinal tract of these animals, the way it's transmitted to us is technically fecal-oral transmission, and this can occur during the slaughtering process where guts are perforated and the contents can leak out and contaminate the meat. So again, this chicken will remind us that the reservoir for campy is especially common in poultry. If we do become infected, you can expect a lot of diarrhea, and oftentimes it's bloody diarrhea. We'll represent bloody diarrhea as we have before, and we'll draw some red stools around the campfire. Red stools for bloody stool. Now we'll draw the guy that's camping, and I'm zooming in to show you his mustache. Notice that it's slightly curved, or comma-shaped. Campy is one of the three curved gram-negative rods, so this mustache will appear in all three of the videos, so take note of that. In addition to having the curved mustache, we'll give our guy a blue ring. And this is our recurring symbol for oxidase positive. And you'll see this is a common feature for all of the three curved gram-negative rods. Aside from having diarrhea and bloody stools, it's also possible to get bacteremia from campy, which means that it enters the gut, penetrates the mucosa, and enters the bloodstream. So, it's invasive. To represent campy's invasive nature, we'll draw a bear cub invading the cooler. So campy is invasive. And how does our camping guy react to this invasion? Well, we've made him laughing and slapping his knee. So he's reacting to the situation by laughing and slapping his knee. This reactive knee slap is meant to represent reactive arthritis. Reactive arthritis, or Reiter syndrome, is one of the seronegative spondyloarthropathies, and it can be precipitated by a campy infection. So remember this guy's knee slap and think reactive arthritis. Now we'll draw Mama Bear behind him. She doesn't look too happy. These cubs are playing with sausage links, and as you can see, one of the cubs is tangled in the links as it's wrapped around his leg and is tripping him. And this finally ties in the title of the story, Guy and the Bears, which is supposed to sound like Guillain-Barre. Guillain-Barre occurs after being infected with some bacteria and viral infections, Campy being the most classic. The body can have an autoimmune response that causes demyelination of peripheral nerves. And this can cause an ascending paralysis. So to represent this, we've shown sausage links tied around the cub's ankle, causing him to fall over. We did this to show that it starts from the lower extremities and then ascends. And we used sausage links specifically because they look a lot like nerve axons with myelin wrapped around them. Remember those nodes of Ranvier? Well, those are in between every sausage. So again, Guillain-Barre can happen after a campy infection, which triggers an autoimmune response that damages myelin and typically presents as an ascending paralysis, which is opposite of botulism. Botulism, remember, is the descending paralysis, so keep that in mind as well. And that's actually all we have for Campylobacter jejuni, a nice and short one. So continue on watching our videos on Vibrio and Helicobacter, which are the other two curved gram-negative rods.